Okay, hello once again. I'm back, Professor SYS, and this time we'll try to cover three things right here in this one video because I found that to be totally possible. Quantity, errors, and measurement. Okay, since this is a crash course, something like a summary, we'll go through this as quick as possible. Quantity, you need to remember two things, scalar, and secondly, vector quantity. We've got scalar quantity and vector quantity. In scalar quantity, you're only measuring the magnitude. What do we mean by magnitude? If you play Pokemon, you know there's a move called magnitude. So basically, magnitude is like um, the size. Yes, exactly, the size. So scalar is like only the size. Boom. Wow, vector. You have to remember that there are two things here. It's kind of like um, scalar plus another thing. So it's the size plus the direction. So with this vector right here it's like you have a human standing in the middle trying to use to move magnitude so it's going to boom in either this direction or boom in either that direction it has a size and a direction it's not only booming about how high the boom is it's also about booming which direction that is he is going for okay this is all my way of explaining okay let's just come ignore this explaining nation just remember magnitude is for scalar vector is size and direction two things perfect now, next thing, errors. For errors, you need to remember there are three errors here. First thing, we call it random error. Secondly, we call it parallax error. And thirdly, we call it systematic error. So for random error, it is like things that are random in our environment. It's like, okay, temperature. Temperature are random error because let's say when you're doing an experiment and suddenly a wind blow by temperature drops a little bit then suddenly the cloud covers the sun temperature drop even more and suddenly the sun rises up temperature raises a little bit if you were to measure if all the scientists is like they try to get rid of every single random error they will all die from exhaustion so basically for random error to kind of overcome this random error since they are that random and their effects to the reading is just a little bit tiny little bit so basically you want to just take three readings so with three readings everything will be fine kind of like take average reading that's why your teacher always asks you to take average reading okay next thing parallax error parallax error is like when you are looking at a ruler you want to keep let's say you are trying to measure a length of an eraser of an eraser Okay, let's just resolve the rank of a Pokemon. This is yep. So you look at the Pokemon. Um, this is I don't know what Pokemon is this. You look at it, and then you are going to try to keep your eyes ninety degree to the ruler. If you actually stand here and you try to look at this Pokemon, here is how is what is going to happen. Tada! You can see that this Pokemon suddenly becomes longer based on the ruler because your eyes go in a straight line like this and it cross to this instead of this reading. So that's why you need to stand 90 degree to your ruler. We call this perpendicular keeps your eye perpendicular to the ruler and to avoid parallax error. Just remember with this because in your SPM paper too, it will always come out like so many times. They will ask you what are the precautions that can be taken. Okay, say it out with me, say it out with me. To avoid parallax arrow by keeping your eyes 90 degree at the whatever the instrument is a meter ruler okay remember to avoid parallax arrow by keeping your eyes perpendicular to the instrument or 90 degree to the instrument that's it we have covered two things now move on to the last thing is systematic error this are uh, something i call dumb people error where people can make this kind of mistakes that you are not supposed to make you know for certain instrument we should go through that later like the vernier caliper um i'll make a video on this soon so hopefully there will be in a suggestion then kind of have a starting part if you try to squeeze this particular small ruler by the side there's another small ruler here in the vernier caliper yep something that looks like this my perfect drawing you kind of realize that the starting instead of getting the starting uh, let's draw another skill my perfect drawing okay so let's say this is the main skill and this is the small skill okay you will realize that instead of trying to squeeze this both at the same place they kind of go like this perfectly aligned this is what we want but that's not going to happen because when your caliper micrometer works that way you can see there's a little bit of gap here and when this there's a little bit of gap this means that it has some extra value right so this means after we have get 
our reading based on this and this we measure our object reading object reading then we need to multi minus the zero arrow back because there's an extra space right here okay while this one it has no zero arrow which is not so possible actually if you know how does the how does it work and basically we'll go through this more in depth in another video systematic error it just it is just dumb people who forget to get their zero arrow to be negative or plus to be deducted or added to it so the values are incorrect okay a little bit of recap here so random error it is basically taking the average because it's randomizing error it's like something that you can't fix it parallax error keep your eyes 90 degree and systematic error is actually to keep it it's the zero error it's the dumb people error it's something that can be easily avoided but because you forget it you get the wrong reading now the measurement part is always good to illustrate with a uh, target my beautiful drawing okay a little bit clear here so first thing first is about consistency consistency is about being consistent which means your shot is going to be somewhere nearby so ta 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 let's say i take five shot okay six shot and then okay this seven and all of them fall at this area okay that's very consistent ta 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 another shot uh -huh, this is quite consistent too then suddenly i get one two three four five six Wait, they are very far apart from each other. Your shots are very inconsistent. That's how we say it. So this is the readings. So if the readings are very close together, they are consistent. If the readings suddenly they go from 1 to 10,000, that will be highly inconsistent. Okay, moving on to the next part here. It's called accuracy. For accuracy, it is basically like we say there's the actual collect, correct reading right here. So when your value is very near to the center, we say it to be very accurate. But then, well, when it is kind of far from the center, let's say this particular eraser right here is 10 centimeter, and you get a reading to be 100 centimeter, then you, we will say that you are highly inaccurate. Now bear in mind here that there are no totally accurate stuff. This is just extra knowledge. I haven't seen an SPM model paper that asks this. Totally accurate reading because whatever you do let's say that this ruler if i'm a maniac if i'm i'm, if I, well, I'm a robot and i know everything it's like 10.0001275151 millimeter and the values can go on forever and the more you can reach my decimal the more accurate it will be but because we are human we are limited we can never get this accurate value where it is actually yeah this reading so moving on to the last thing here sensitivity so sensitivity is kind of simple it is two things how small the value you can measure two and how fast it can react to changes so for sensitivity you have to understand that let's say i have a thermometer then i have a capillary tube if the capillary tube is very thin do you think you will react to change quickly? Yes, definitely. Compared to the thick one, imagine if the thick one you have a fluid expanding, you only explain a little bit. It can't show that much of an improvement in terms of change. So you can say this one because the capillary tip is very small, it allows small changes to be detected. Let's say I raise the temperature by 0 0.01, and you can realize that this 0 0.01 is detected by this thermometer. Wow, this one, 0 0.01, can kind of just expand it just a little bit. It looks like it's at the same place. No, we call this thick capillary tube thermometer not sensitive. By the way, this is capillary tube. Yep. So we call this not sensitive, and this one to be extra sensitive. Yep, that's it for the crash course of quantity errors and measurement. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you, and have a great day.